name again is Terry Bogus. Um, Center Kids has been hosting events and groups facilitating the formation of LGBT families since 1989 here at the Center. Planning Biological Parenthood, which is one of our groups, Planning Bio Parenthood for Men, has been running for about 15 years under wonderful, inspired volunteer leadership and has been growing in size. It's one of many groups. We have Planning Bio Parenthood for Women, going through donor insemination. We have parenting partnerships for gay men and lesbians who might want to meet and consider having and raising a child together, um, both of them involved in that process. Want to be dads and moms for um, gay men and lesbians interested in adoption. Um, but this particular group has grown and grown over the years. Surrogacy has a very interesting history in New York City. It's, of course, as many of you know, not legal in New York State. Uh, one of very few states where it's not legal, and for a while that proved a real impediment for, for our guys. Not because um, there weren't ways to work around that situation, but because it sent a signal, I think, that said, uh, that it was discouraging to men. It was intimidating, and it's intimidating enough to be a guy, a gay man approaching biological parenthood without having um, a welcome. And it was very unwelcome to have that law. However, way back in the day, gay men were still were doing this. Uh, we're approaching parenting biologically through surrogacy. My partner and I met two gay men because we placed a classified ad for sperm donors in the Village Voice in the mid '80s. We had no idea how to ha how to have a baby. The two two of the guys we met, who we ended up sort of dating and deciding we couldn't, ha uh, you know, do this project together went their own way and through a, a traditional surrogacy arrangement made out of state, they now have two sons, one 19 and one 16. There are other men in the program who have been doing surrogacy you know, over the years, but the critical mass, the huge upsurge in this interest, I think is really a direct result, and frankly, of our panelists, people who have facilitated this process for gay men in a really welcoming, affirming, positive, celebratory way. And I think that has more than anything served to throw open the doors to guys like you who might be interested in this particular path. So before um, I introduce the panel, I want to first of all thank our planning team. Um, Kim. Kim from Bill Berry Communications, and Bill Berry himself, who's not here today, they've been tremendous production partners. They really, really do the publicity and made an awful lot of this happen, representing Melissa Brisbane and RMA. And Ron Poole Diane, who I'm going to ask to say a few words. Ron is the heart and soul um, of this particular piece of our, the LGBT family formation movement. He loves to help men follow this path. And I think there's a real difference between the kind of folks who are committed to this because they want to have their own children, and then the people who are committed to this and stay in it even after they have children to help other people. And Ron is one of those guys. So Ron, do you want to talk a little bit about the group? I see a few uh, familiar faces here of people who have been coming to the group, but I think uh, it is particularly important to mention this context that uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, that uh, the topic of having uh, kids biologically by gay men is, is very complicated. And while we have about two hours, uh, it is very, very hard to comprehend and absorb and, and not be totally overwhelmed uh, in a setting like that. So I guess I'm here just to remind you that it's okay to be a little overwhelmed. Uh, there are a lot of people you can talk to after the, after the program um, in, in the tables uh, around us, and also uh, this is what we do at the group. So every fourth Wednesday, not this month, but starting next month, uh, we uh, we meet and people come. Um, a lot of people come after, even continue coming after after they're becoming pregnant or uh, even have the kids. Uh, some of them even working on uh, having a sibling. But first and foremost, we share a lot of information, and it's impossible to have all the information you need, and you need a lot of advice ahead of time. So pace yourselves. Uh, it's a lot of interesting information you'll hear here. You can take notes, you can take materials, but if you feel overwhelmed, that's okay. And uh, we'd love to see you at the group. Uh, some people, you know, as I mentioned, come even with their kids. We have special guests we, ha uh, we try to have. It's very hard to cover every particular angle uh, of surrogacy on the panel. In fact, we're missing one of the people, or at least we're actually two, two people by now. Um, 
but for the, to the group, we, we try to bring people who did uh, uh, traditional surrogacy, independent surrogacy. We have uh, uh, medical people come again and, uh, you know, talking more length, not just 12 minutes, which is very hard for, you know, to cover the medical aspect. Psychologists, uh, social workers, uh, lawyers who come and talk about, you know, what happens after you have the babies or baby and, and you know, uh, how do you uh, gain your legal rights uh, in New York. Uh, once that happens, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these topics and every other topic that people might want to bring up, uh, we're very, you know, forthcoming and, 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 uh, and receptive to bringing uh, uh, guests to accommodate that. So uh, every fourth Wednesday, 6:30 at the center. I, I hope to see you there, and good luck.